Another car we're rolling into the paint booth, another opportunity to have success, another opportunity to learn, and another opportunity to have complete failure. Every time you go into the paint booth, you never know what the outcome is gonna be, whether it's your paint booth or your own home garage. In this video, we're gonna show you some of the successes and failures along the way. I'm completely self-taught with no ASC certifications previous to getting into this field, no technical schools, and all this you can completely learn. So we have this TLX here. We're gonna be doing some blending onto the hood. You can see we had a chip right in this area, so we're gonna blend the whole entire hood up into the corner. Now, what I'm most likely gonna always do is go for my best gun when I'm spraying a job that I want it to come out good. You always wanna set yourself up for success. And I've been using this DV1 for a long time and I've got my paint mixed up and I know that this is the right recipe for success, but some things don't always go right. But what you wanna do is get your settings right on your spray gun. So I always like to spray this gun in and around 13 to 14 PSI. Now, what are we doing here? Well, we have a fender. A fender's already been cut in. I know myself, I know my weakness. My weakness is not being able to match paint off the vehicle when blending. So what do I do with my weakness? I cut it in in base coat only, and now I'm gonna paint it on the vehicle. Yes, this takes longer, but it works better in the end for me. I also learned that spraying paint wet is going to be the best option for my paint system. This is something in the last six months that I've learned that is going to yield a better result. Some of what I was doing before was just a little bit too dry and was yielding less than desirable finishes. Now here we can see that I'm coming to the end of the hood and off that body line, I'm using that body line for my blend area. We did have a couple chips that I did fix for free for the customer, so we did have to go a little bit further than we wanted. Now taking a look at this color, there's something completely wrong. And when I get to this situation, I've had enough. That's it. I don't want to deal with it, but I know how to fix it. Just a little bit of yellow is all I need. So I took the original mixture, added a little bit of yellow, and now I'm gonna reapply that paint. See, the difference between somebody that gives up right away and the difference between someone that has experience is that they're willing to be able to take the time that they need to fix the problem. So when issues like this occur at 8 p.m. and we wanna go home to our families, we know how to fix them fast. So just one coat is all we'll need to go over all of these areas. We've already got that first coverage with that. Let's call it a ground coat now since it didn't really match. It actually had too much black in it. And I already know what happened, guys. I mixed over just a little bit too much black. I tried to pull it out. And guess what? If you're doing something that you know is gonna be wrong, most likely when you go to put it on a car, it's gonna be wrong. But I know what's right and I know how to fix it. So I added just a little bit of yellow toner and that's greatly gonna help me out here on this second coat. And it's not a problem because we're always gonna do two coats anyways. And since we have that coverage with that initial first, then we're good to go. We can see here, it is a big reach. And a big problem for me is reaching to the middle of hoods. Don't have the longest arms in the world. And sometimes my paint suit wants to go ahead and hit it. And well, we've already seen that on video many times in my YouTube channel. So you all let me know in the comments when I'm doing something wrong and I appreciate it because now when I go to clear coat, guess what? That lab coat gets tucked in. Now we're ready for our pearl. Now I've only got about 10 ounces of pearl and I'm gonna loosen it up just with a little bit of extra slow reducer and I'm gonna spray it on wet. I've only got 12 ounces for this job, but I know I can make it happen. Now, if your base isn't right, then your pearl's not gonna look any better. It's not gonna hide it. Now, we have a great covering base here, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna focus on the blend area. We're gonna put down one coat around 75% overlap. Now, I've had enough. That's the title of the actual thumbnail itself. How many times have you have had enough where you wanna quit painting? I cannot tell you how many times I felt this same way, where I wish I'll just go back to my teaching job, my day job, from 7.30 to 3, I'll come home to my kids, I'll never touch a paint gun again. These are thoughts that cross my mind every time a paint job goes bad, but if you never learn from a paint job, then what good is it? Now, it was a humble start in the beginning because I had no training. I had no ASCs prior to this. I had no training in technical school, just a backyard painter like all of you. So what did I do? I learned and I learned and I got the job in the body shop and if I painted 10 cars, I messed up eight. Not dramatically, but not perfect enough. A lot of redos, a lot of problems. Many times where I said, this is not for me. And some of you are feeling that same way. And my job is to make you not feel that way. If something doesn't go well, it doesn't mean you're a bad painter. It doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that you need more time. 
time is the healer of all. We say the power of yet. You haven't gotten to that point yet. And that's the whole basis of this video is to inspire each and one, every one of you to learn that you are not there yet, but you will be. If you give it enough practice, you will be. Now, if you want to paint your car, I'm not telling you guys to go and buy every single tool you're going to need to paint that one car and never paint again. That's not going to be a great idea. We're going to spend too much money. We could have got it done professionally for about half the cost. But if you want to get into this trade and you want to go balls deep and you really want to own this, then get yourself started and realize that mistakes are going to happen every single day. Mistakes will happen on every single job. Here I'm looking at my paint job, I'm looking at that tape just sticking out and flapping away. That wasn't taped down. That's a mistake. Yes, it is a tape. It is acting a little bit crappy in the humid Florida temperature, but I'm thinking maybe I'm going to change over to the green tape. I don't know. You guys can let me know. I've been having some problems with the 3M yellow and it's just not sticking some of the times and it's driving me insane. All we need is a little bit of overspray inside the vehicle or on any of the components of the engine bay and then we've created more work for ourselves. For this particular job in a clear coat right here, I've learned to really dial it in. I've learned to really lay it down. A lot of you see that yellow tape on that cup and you ask me why. This is the biggest question I get. Why are you putting yellow tape on your cup? Well, these cups have been used before and they have dried up paint on them that do flake off into the paint job. And you know if you're gonna get flaked off paint, it's only gonna flake off into your white paint job. The only color where you cannot pick it out. The only color will it will show you every single problem. But it's the only color where you can sometimes get away with bad body work. So every color has its pluses and minuses. For this particular job, going over the top of the hood, I've learned 80 to 85% overlap. Taking it slow, when you look at a vehicle, when it comes from the factory, all of your flat panels, your trunk, your hood, your roof, those are flatter than the sides. Let's say we took this hood and we painted it on a stand so it was sitting completely vertical like a door and we sprayed it down and it looked beautiful, but when we put it on the car, it would look a lot more orange peely than it actually would than a spot that it is now. When you spray a panel, spray it the way it sits on the car. We can see after the first coat here, we're really dialed in that gun. If you're wondering what the settings are and what the gun is, it is a Nawada Series 2 spray gun. I love this spray gun. This spray gun, you gotta treat it like a lady. But I'll get into that in just a moment. Now on our A pillar, say what you want, but this is a blend. We use one, two, and three and some dots. The first coat of clear came to number one. The second coat is gonna step out to number two, about six inches past number one. And where those little dots were, that's where we're gonna use the SRA, which you'll see here in a moment. That must be done as soon as you spray that second coat. What do I mean by treat your paint gun like a lady? You need to watch it. You need to listen to it. You need to be very gentle and elegant with it. Watch my passes. With this particular gun, it is a slow moving gun. It is one of the most elegant and fine atomization spray guns I've ever used. So with that, treat it that way. Move slow with it. Watch what it's doing. Watch what your woman is doing. Listen to what it's doing. Listen to what it's doing and see what it's doing and you change what you are doing from there. You've ever gone into an argument with somebody or even your spouse, you two are arguing back and forth because one person usually is not listening. Stop to listen, stop to look, see what the spray gun is doing. On this type of spray gun, it does not need all of the pressure. You don't need to bump it up to around 40 PSI or even higher. On this spray gun, I'm finding 26 PSI is working fine. You see my distance. This is the only spray gun where you can spray between five and six inches from the panel, move that slow, and it will atomize and still lay it on smooth. I've seen spray guns where you really gotta move in close. You gotta really watch your passes. This has the, the fattest spray pattern, the most beautiful spray pattern I've ever seen at around 12 inches. And this gun is an expensive gun. This is a professional use gun. Do it yourself or do not buy this gun because it is not worth your time if you're just doing it here and there. Especially do it yourselfers that if you're spraying in your garage, most likely you're gonna have to wet sand and buff anyways, so it doesn't matter. I don't want you guys to go spend all the money that you don't need. 
put it into a compressor, put it into something else that is of more value. But don't buy a cheap, cheap spray gun, but not a $900 spray gun. Not worth it. So again, treating your spray guns like a lady, when they're done, making sure you take care of them. We don't take this gun and run thinner through it. We break it down completely. We make sure everything is scrubbed so that the next time that when we go to use this spray gun, it is taken care of. If you learn to value your tools, if you learn to value your family, if you learn to value the people and your friendships and everyone around you and everything that helps you get a better job and more success and take care of them, then each job and everything you do in your every life experiences are going to be that better. So have I had enough? Yes. On this particular job, I have had enough because I've had enough of other jobs and those other jobs I've had enough of that I've learned from has guaranteed a perfect job on a particular car. And this job came out really happy and I'm really proud of the way that it did come out. But not all jobs will come out perfect and there will be other jobs that will not come out perfect. There's been even jobs that I make a YouTube video on that I've gone back and I have fixed after because there's been things that I don't like. But that is how it goes. So the next morning we're back at it at 6.17 before school starts. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna unmask it and take this quick little video. My life is full pace from six o'clock to eight o'clock at night. And this is the way it's rolling right now and I do enjoy it. But if it gets to a point where it's too much, then I gotta dial back and I gotta give myself more time for other things. But right now, this is what is working out for me. And this is a little bit of a video of my lifestyle and a little bit of an inspiration video to show you all to get out there, to not be lazy, that you can do it. If you can't spray a certain clear, don't worry. You can still get into it and you can work the fine motor movements of the actual gun, the adjustments, and make it work for your certain self. Now you can see this is coming out really good and I can see right here on the fender, it came out beautiful. It's a perfect match because we didn't take the paint all the way to the edge of that fender. I'm gonna show it to you here just in the outside in a moment, but I really hope this video helps you inspire. So if you've had enough, if you've gotten to the point where you wanna give up, if you've gotten to the point where you say this sucks, come back and watch this video. Come back and take a chat with me. DM me on Instagram. I'm gonna help you through it. I wanna make sure that you don't give up on yourself and that you keep on carrying through. Guys, this is Brian from Paint Side reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.